In this video, I want to talk about how to correctly test for adrenal fatigue. We will go over the different types of tests, so blood, saliva, urine, and hair testing, their benefits and drawbacks. At the end of the video, I will also explain which of the different tests I prefer and why. Let's get started. Okay, so to begin, let's quickly recap what adrenal fatigue is. We're talking about an exhaustion of the adrenal glands which sit above your kidneys. They are important because they secrete certain hormones that help your body deal with stress, such as adrenaline, noradrenaline, cortisol, and aldosterone. And they also secrete small amounts of sex hormones like estrogen and testosterone. Add to that the fact that the adrenal glands are critical for energy production, and adrenal fatigue is the perfect recipe for stress and a chronic lack of energy. Now, the whole topic is very controversial and it's not an accepted medical condition. I discuss the validity of adrenal fatigue in a different video. So just keep that in mind. This video is for educational purposes only. It's not medical advice. Great. With that said, let's now discuss the different available tests for adrenal fatigue. To assess adrenal function, you usually test for adrenal hormones, most often cortisol. Very low levels or unnatural patterns throughout the day are indicative of adrenal fatigue. And most labs test blood, saliva, or urine. You can also test for adrenal function indirectly, for example, through electrolytes, because the adrenal glands regulate electrolyte levels, especially sodium and potassium, through adrenal hormones like aldosterone. I will talk about this in more detail at the end of the video. The first type of test I want to talk about are blood tests. Blood tests are the go-to option for most traditional practitioners, and the pros are fairly straightforward. First, blood tests allow you to measure cortisol, but also certain other hormones and biomarkers related to the adrenal glands. For example, there's something called the ACTH stimulation test. ACTH is the hormone responsible for stimulating cortisol production, so one step before the adrenals pump out cortisol. The test basically involves injecting synthetic ACTH and then measuring the body's effect to it, so primarily cortisol production. Should the person show low cortisol even after the ACTH stimulation, you then assume low adrenal function. Another benefit is that since blood tests are widely used and usually standardized, you can more easily compare the results from different tests across different people and different labs. And lastly, blood tests often come back fairly quickly since they are done by labs across the world with very fast turnaround times. But there are also drawbacks. For example, most blood tests will only be ordered by a practitioner if you have clear signs of adrenal insufficiency, so if they suspect you might have Addison's disease, which is fairly rare. That means the reference ranges used for blood tests are also calibrated to only pick up very high or very low levels of cortisol. So it is somewhat binary in that anything outside the small extremes is seen as healthy. Another drawback is that because a blood test can only provide a snapshot of hormone levels at a single point in time, it won't fully capture the fluctuations of adrenal function throughout the day. But like I said before, it's not necessarily just low adrenal hormone levels, but also unnatural patterns that can be indicative of adrenal function. But for that, you need more than one sample. And a third potential problem is that drawing blood is more invasive than other tests, and a lot of people don't like needles. Great, let's now talk about saliva testing. This is the most popular at-home test for adrenal fatigue, and it usually also measures cortisol along with a few other adrenal hormones at different points throughout the day. The tests are very simple and afterwards you just send the sample to the lab. The first advantage of saliva testing is that it is non-invasive. Really all you have to do is spit in a tube or a vial several times throughout the day and there is no need for needles or other invasive measures. Of course, the option of having multiple samples is another advantage because we're interested in your cortisol levels over the course of the day. So saliva testing would be the best test for that, since pretty much all testing kits come with several tubes that you fill up while noting the time. A third benefit is that unlike blood-based tests, saliva diagnostics 
can measure the amount of free unbound hormone that is available to act in the cell. Much of the hormones circulating in the bloodstream are bound to carrier proteins. Saliva, on the other hand, contains unbound bioavailable hormones. This isn't directly related to adrenal fatigue, but to give you an example, I used to be estrogen dominant and develop gynecomastia, but blood tests always showed normal estrogen and testosterone levels in my blood. Only a saliva hormone test showed a clear estrogen dominance, which then allowed me to develop a nutrition program to reduce the estrogen in my body and rebalance my hormones. And lastly, saliva tests are more convenient. This is pretty self-explanatory. You don't need to go see a doctor for them. In terms of drawbacks, the biggest one is probably its validity. Saliva testing is controversial and often seen as problematic because many labs use their own reference ranges, which can make it difficult to compare results between different labs. The research on saliva testing is somewhat mixed, with many studies showing that it can definitely be a viable alternative to blood serum testing, but also stating that further research is needed. For example, one review concluded both salivary cortisol and cortisone showed promise as alternatives to serum cortisol although further work to define reference ranges and their response to dynamic testing is needed before they can be used in routine clinical practice. Storage and handling can also sometimes be a problem. Since you're doing the test yourself, you need to make sure to store the saliva samples correctly and avoid contamination. Saliva cortisol should be kept cool after collection, so ideally in the refrigerator, but of course at some point you need to mail your samples to the lab which ideally should be done as fast as possible to avoid degradation of the samples. And lastly, we have limited use. Most general practitioners don't like using saliva testing and will opt for blood tests instead. It's simply what they're most familiar with. But since adrenal fatigue is a controversial condition to begin with, you will have to find a practitioner with an open mind anyway. The third type of test you sometimes see are urine tests. Urine testing usually involves collecting all of your urine for a 24-hour period and then bringing everything in one sample to the lab. Here the pros are one, that you can measure a wide range of metabolites and hormones, which could provide a more comprehensive view of your adrenal function. Two, the 24-hour profile gives you a more detailed picture of hormone excretion over the day, at least compared to the blood test. And three, it is also fairly non-invasive, because like saliva testing, urine collection can also be done at home. Unfortunately, there are also some problems. For example, hormones in the urine can be influenced by many things, like hydration status and kidney function. So what comes out isn't necessarily what is produced. Also, many people do them improperly. Studies have found that about a third of all 24-hour urine collection samples are invalid due to contamination, improper storage, or other things. And lastly, they are kind of annoying. I can tell you from personal experience that collecting your urine for an entire day is annoying and kind of gross, since most urine samples need to be stored in the fridge until you bring them to the lab. Great, so these three types of testing are the most common when it comes to evaluating your adrenal function and cortisol levels. But which is best? To be honest, it really depends. If you're screening for severe adrenal insufficiency, so Addison's disease, your practitioner will definitely order blood tests along with a few others because they will be the best basis for them to work with. But again, I'm not a doctor and this isn't medical advice. What we are interested in is adrenal fatigue. And for that, of the three, I would prefer saliva testing. Yes, it's not always standardized and some labs use different ranges, but the ability to take different samples throughout the day is a huge plus that you don't have with the other testing methods. So when done right, it will be more nuanced than a one-time blood test or a 24-hour urine test. That said, my favorite test is actually something entirely different, a hair analysis, not of cortisol, but of electrolytes. Like I said in the beginning of the video, the adrenals are responsible for maintaining healthy electrolyte levels through hormones such as aldosterone, which retains sodium. So if someone has low sodium on a hair test, you can instantly tell that this person's adrenal glands are not producing enough aldosterone 
to maintain healthy levels in the body. They are simply peeing out all the sodium that they consume. On the other hand, someone with high sodium still has enough aldosterone and in fact suffers from adrenal overactivity. The reason I prefer hair analysis over the tests we just talked about is because it also gives you insight into other nutrients and possible deficiencies and imbalances that you need to fix to get healthy again. Because adrenal fatigue never happens in isolation. There are usually multiple problems going on, not just with your electrolytes, but also with other nutrients. And when we fix those, then the adrenal fatigue often goes away on its own. So when we get the results of the hair analysis, we actually have a world map that tells us what to work on and how to get better step by step. We don't have that with urine, saliva, or blood testing of just cortisol, even of other hormones. They don't tell us what to do with the results. This is critical because even the practitioners that accept adrenal fatigue as a possible condition mostly only run saliva tests, for example, then get the results and diagnose the person with adrenal fatigue, but they don't really know what to do next. They might prescribe an adaptogen like ashwagandha and tell the person to rest more, but that's it. Often, the underlying reason for adrenal burnout are things like copper overload, magnesium deficiency, or other nutrient-related problems that a saliva test will miss. Even nutrient blood tests usually don't spot them, since nutrients aren't stored in the blood, but instead in the tissue. So unless you know what's going on in someone's biochemistry, you won't get to the root cause of things. All of this is explained in much more detail in my other videos, and I also have a step-by-step -step recovery program if you need more guidance. I hope you like this video, and I will see you on the next one.